Thanks for staying with us. Uh, now, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has activated all zonal territorial and operational offices nationwide to collaborate with state's emergency management agencies, SEMAs, for rescue operations and situation assessment due to flooding. NEMA's offices are located in Lagos, Ibadan, Ekiti, Abuja, Mina, Jos, Enugu, Oweri, Port Harcourt, Edo, Uyo, Kanu, Sokoto, Kaduna, Meiduguri, Yola, and Gombe. They operate a toll-free emergency contact line and have social media platforms for public feedback. Now, search and rescue officers have been deployed to flood-affected areas, providing support and coordinating with SEMA and all other stakeholders. Rapid assessments are ongoing to determine additional assistance needed in impacted communities. So we're talking this morning about the fact that federal government have act has activated uh, state emergency centers. Uh, to discuss this with me, or with us rather, is Mr. Ofoni uh, D. Williams, a public affairs analyst and environmentalist, is talking to us from Bielsa State. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, these emergency centers have been activated now. What does that mean to us? Does it mean all is, uh, all is going to be well, or what else is going to come out of that? As a matter of fact, uh, as a matter of fact, concerning this uh, flood and flash floods all over Nigeria, is uh, in the insensitivity of Nigerians that have led us to where we are right now. And although flood is uh, something that is perennial to some extent, and flash floods as a sort of uh, negligence from the people or the inhabitants of any location. Why I'm saying this is because uh, the environment speaks, the environment speaks very clear and loud, but women fail to understand the environment until incidents occur. Why I'm saying this is because in most cases, like in the urban centers, where we have flat floors, it's as a result of inhumanity to the environment, the unfriendly nature of man to the environment that have induced flash floors. One, it could be as a result of inappropriate development plans in terms of drainage and attitudinal problems of the habitants in, that, in those areas. We have more now made the drains, the dumping grounds. And when situations like this occur, at the slightest rainfall, where this water is supposed to be channeled through the drains to be to a larger water, water bodies, and the places are flooded, and then we now have flash floods. In some parts of the world, or some parts of the country, like in Nigeria, particularly Bayasa State, Bayasa State is properly drained by nature because there's canal running across the length and breadth of the capital and most cities, or most communities in Minagua and Bayasa. Bayasa is a well drained situation, but however, we still have flood, flash floods. Not that, I'm not talking about perennial flood, flash floods, which is very, very uncalled for. And this is not come to be because the people are insensitive to the environment. In terms of perennial floods, that one, to a large extent, there's little nothing we can do because uh, it all depends on the level of precipitation of rain, the, red, the, the level of readiness in terms of uh, the silting of the rivers where they need be. Like for instance now, you know, the, the Vananga run, runs the land and branch of our four countries before it gets to Nigeria. And Nigeria, uh, Bayasa State is where the delta is. And there's no other delta from these four countries until it gets to Nigeria. Therefore, there's going to be, there's bound to be situation in Nigeria because Nigeria almost falls in the delta region. That is, Bayasa State and it was, it was, the Nigeria is more delta -ic. So in that situation, it's expected of federal government to desilt the river so that the, water, uh, the river will be able to uh, accommodate more water. The, the channel will be deepened and will be able to accommodate more water. Two, we are expected to build from dams to conserve water or to serve as a reservoir so that the impact of the flooding might be mitigated. But since the federal government has not been able to do it, they believe in the makeshift. And that's why this NEMA and uh, the state SEMA are calling on uh, that people to be alert and do this or do that. In doing that, what they are going to do that there is a mere ritual year in, year out. And I don't think that's the way to address the flood situation and the flood uh, flood situations in Nigeria. Nigerian government needs to be very, very appropriate and more serious in terms of the federal government, in terms of state government, in terms of 
the local governments, everybody has to be serious. And even individuals have to be educated massively on the impact of flooding and its negative effect yeah. on the So economy, talking about the individuals, the man, talking about individuals that are supposed to be prepared, do you think that there's enough awareness? Yeah, as, per as per individual, our attitude is very poor. The attitude of Nigerians are very poor. But do you think there's enough awareness? To the people. Uh, the word, uh, awareness, is, awareness is there, but it's a attitudinal problem. Because every, every woman being is, every sane woman being knows that they, you, you need not to dump refuge into the drains. Every woman being knows that water channels are not dumping grants. So to a large extent, uh, uh, the awareness is there, but it's a attitudinal problem. Like in cities, more particularly in cities where the distribution centers or the refugee collection centers are far from uh, households and there is no light to light up the streets. People will be walking and in, in, the, in the name of darkness, people might decide to dump their refuge by the, by the mm. trees. That's attitudinal problem. And this, thing, this attitudinal problem is very, very uncalled for. It's shameful for Nigerians to be continuing in this kind of manner because that's an indication that we are not friendly to the environment. Mm. Which, you know, something happened, I think, was it last week, whereby some people were being arrested in Lagos because there was a flash flood as well. And you're seeing these people dumping refuse into the waters. Well, I, I yes, uh, because you see, the government to some extent is passive. They're not enforceful in terms of the existing laws, but they are abundant law to regulate the environment. And in, in terms of building structures close to canals, Mm. It is people like people that don't adhere to it. People build the houses into the canal. People make the canals refuge dump. And you know, these canals are like a hard trace in the human body that carries the blood mm. of every from the heart to every part of the body. And when an artery is blocked, then they, you know that there's bound to be something in the human body. So, like is it in the in the environment when the canals or the channels of water passage are blocked, they don't expect the less the, the the water has to react because water has to find its level. And then we now start having flash floods all over. Um, to be ready for uh, mishaps so that they can they can give some palliative. So who should run the process of the things that are left undone? Because this shouldn't have been the first thing to be done by the government. Now you mentioned some other things. So who runs this process? Who is responsible that is not doing their duty? Uh, the government, you know, or not, or not, the federal government is because this uh, issue of uh, relief material, uh, I mean, it's cosmetic. Because what the government needs to do, they need to do the first thing first. Relief material is even the last stage of mitigation that is required, but it comes first. Nigerian government, be it federal, be it state, and be it local government. And the individuals are always expectant for the relief material because uh, it which is very unfortunate. We've had this um, flooding. It has hit the south-south region. But what permanent measures have been put in place? I know that um, the federal government now is saying they're activating state emergencies um, centers for ahead of flooding. But having to have emergency centers is one thing. What is the permanent thing that they're doing? Because if we even look at Lagos, right, there was flooding. Uh, I think that was last week, and it was almost in all parts of Lagos State. And we're talking about other states like Bielsa as well going through this. So what permanent measures have the federal government tried to put in place? Because if we're talking 2012, this is 2024. Twelve years later, we're still having this Please, same conversation. I'm, I'm asking that what permanent measures have the federal government put in place to be able to curtail flooding? Because if we've been having this rock our boats since, 20, since 2012, this is 2024. Twelve years later, we're still having the same conversation about flooding. And then the federal government is activating emergency centers. But that is only going to do something at this point, what is the permanent measure to ensure that we are not having flash floods in Nigeria anymore? Okay. Firstly, what the government needs to do, government needs to be very serious and pragmatic. Firstly, the government needs to ensure that the blended plants are appropriately developed and uh, places are appropriately planned out so that there will be no congestion, 
There should be service lane. There should be buffer zones for drainages in our cities. Now, these buffer zones are areas where the water channel will, will, will pass through. Therefore, if roads are constructed and there are beautiful drains and deep drains, then these flash floods will not occur. But if the failure of government to ensure where development is not properly coordinated, then there is bound to be flash floods. There is no two ways about it. There is bound to be flash floods. There is no magic if, there's, if there we have inappropriate development in our cities. Note that in cities, here populations are very high, like in places like Lagos. And therefore, the, 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 the generation of refuse is very high. And if people now see the drains as uh, their dumping grounds, it becomes very unfortunate. So the government needs to do massive education in, in addition to uh, in, in, in indulging in uh, appropriate planning. The government needs to do massive education of the masses so that people will be in tune to what is, what is invoked and what is in, in place in advance. Because it's this flood thing of it of it is seasonal, and government needs to prepare ahead. So it will be sh it is shocking that a year in year out, government will still be repeating or be remaining in one circle to ensure that they deliver relief materials or maybe to distill drains unnecessarily. In these hard times, we need not to be repeating ourselves day in day out, like maybe you distill the streams as a means of contact for one's uh, AYC. It's a, it, that is becoming a ritual. And on call for ritual, as far as the environment is concerned. Yeah, well, in, in most of these years, uh, since the 2012 that she was talking about, the government always says uh, the dam in Cameroon has been opened. Meanwhile, there's uh, news that uh, before the Cameroonians built that their, their dam, there was an agreement Nigeria was supposed to do something in our own land, but nothing was done. So, is this dam opening a good enough excuse for us to be having the kind of floods that we have here? And if so, and the government is looking at the capital intensive nature of a project like building another dam, are there other measures that they could have done uh, without, without breaking the pocket or breaking the bank? As a matter of fact, the billion, billion of dam is the cheapest uh, individual major that is open to uh, the, uh, the Nigerian government. Billion of dams is the cheapest means that is open to the Nigerian government because to dissert the river Niger year in year out, I mean, it's financially enormous. The, it will be, the financial toll will be too, too grievous for the country to bear. So it is advisable for the country to build numerous dams, more particularly in the northern region, where they will be able to accommodate this water to a large extent. And uh, Cameroon is not to be blamed because I won't build a dam, even if they have agreements with Nigeria. If the flood or the water or the volume of water at the dam threatens the dam. They don't have any option than to open the dam. So what the Nigerian government needs to do, the cheapest mitigation measure that is open to Nigeria is to build numerous dams. Because the Nigerian government cannot afford to sweep the river Niger year in, year out. Or to desist the river Niger year in, year out. It is financially heavy. And the government will never afford it. Because there are other competitive needs from, for the government to handle. So the cheapest medium available for the government is to be more dams. A long-term and sustainable solution. Yes, let it be a long-term and sustainable solution to a large extent. Mm. Because you know, too, uh, you know, it is the level of the precipitation that we decide, uh, the, I mean, the volume of water you get in your house. And therefore, we need to cultivate attitudes and habits that will be friendly to the environment. More particularly, there's ozone depletion. What has led to ozone depletion is unnecessary flowing of gases into the atmosphere that affects the, uh, the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So the ozone layer, now, which is the blanket to the earth, is, is now having a lot of holes. Hence, the radiation is much. And when there is radiation, you expect evaporation to take place in large quantity. And in return, so it's a cycle. Therefore, you expect numerous rain and abundant rain. Because when the ozone layer is depleted, the highs in the mountain tops have to melt. And when they melt seriously, and that is the source of rivers, what now happens? There will be a lot of water in addition to the rain mm. in the water, uh, water channel. And therefore, the water will overflow its banks, when more particularly, the river is very shallow and silted. So the ideal thing the government needs to do is to ensure that they have numerous dams okay. as required to, to mitigate the flood to some extent. And if they want to do additional efforts, additional efforts is to desist the river. Desisting the river has uh, many advantages because it will not give room for effective transportation too. 
It will not give room for uh, breeding grass or fishes. Many things are involved in defeating the river, and the advantages are enormous. And if it is defeating the river, it's what the government decides to do. It's fine and good, equally, because it has other economic importance and advantages. As we wrap up, let me just ask you this. I say a little bit of the, the digression. Uh, how is the flood situation in Bayosa right now? Because the NNPCL, for instance, is using flood as one of the reasons they are accused. Uh, they are, um, there is fuel shortage in a lot of uh, states in Nigeria and all that. So let me just know, meteorological department also said that some few days, whether last week or so, there will be a lot of rain. So we expected that so many places will be flooded. But Bayelsa being what it is and Delta and all that, what is the situation there? Was it as bad as Lake? Uh, as for the flooding and as for the distribution of these uh, energy resources, uh, Bayasa State is at the mercy of God right now. Because wow. you, you can attest to the fact that uh, two years or three years ago, when the AIDS uh, threshold was cut off, Bayasa becomes an island. Bayasa was almost excluded from Nigeria because uh, Bayasa State was incommunicado by road. So in that situation, we, we will find ourselves in a terrible, a terrible situation where life was very unbearable. And upon that, right now, as I speak to you, the East West Road has not been fixed and the floods are coming. And that goes to say that Bayasa State will be, will be, will, will be exercised from Nigeria any moment from now when the flood comes. Because the road is impossible right now, Arandu will be, it's impossible. And again, Arandu, I have a very close to Patani. The road is almost not habitable. So with that development, we don't expect anything less than hardship. And that has gone a large to affect the cost of uh, energy in Bayasa State, particularly gas and uh, uh, fuel, motor spirit. Because uh, in no distance time from now, it will be something else, and it's going to be unbearable. And that goes to the largest into other sister states like in Delta and Bayasa State. That's because our roads are east, especially the east west road that is cutting across all the states, that has great potential or great, great access to the Nigerian government, because this is an economic part of the country. It's unfortunate that we find ourselves in this situation. Yeah. And this road has been there year in, year out. For the past 20 years, for the past 20 years, it, uh, the federal government, the states, have not done the need for to ensure that the East West Road is fixed. That's quite unfortunate. But let's talk about these emergency centers that have been activated. Do you think they are equipped to handle all of this? Because if you're saying this is happening in Bielsa, I want to believe one emergency center would be there because there are several states that have this. But do you think the ones that have been activated by the federal government right now can handle um, you know, this whole flash flood that is to come? Uh, well, uh, the, it will not be enough to handle the situation because the uh, federal government will not spend all their resources in mitigating this flood because of the uh, true relief materials. But the problem that when federal government puts put in our uh, 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 best, what is expected of the state government or the SEMA at the state level to do is to ensure that there is no discrimination, there is no political coloration in the dispute of these relief materials. We had weakness political coloration, particularly in bias states, and I stand to be corrected. Hmm. Where the money has come, it becomes a party issue. And I think that is what is applicable in other states too, where the political party, the political party holds sways. So that attitude is very, 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 very displeasing and uncalled for. Because what is expected is that because the flood doesn't know color, the flood doesn't know political party, the flood doesn't know okay. tribe. So anybody who is an habitant in any location that is affected by the flood should be, as a Nigerian or a non Nigerian, should be beneficiary of the federal government largesse in terms of the relief material. That is my take. All right. Okay. Uh, well, um, <laughs> we'd like to thank you for your um, your thoughts this morning, uh, Mr. Williams. We're so glad that you were able to make it this morning to be a part of our program. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We've been talking with uh, Mr. Ofoni D. Williams, a public affairs analyst and environmentalist. We're looking at a flood and uh, the fact that NEMA has set up centers in every state. And we're hoping that these centers are equipped enough to be able to meet the target, to be able to do what it's supposed to do at what time. But we do hope that in the, in the future, we may not need to get to this point where NEMA will be waiting for something disastrous to happen and then step in to do what they are supposed to do. Let the federal government and all other relevant authorities do what they are supposed to do. We'll take a short break now and return with our next hot topic, and that is the state of the nation as Nigerians are crying for help. 
Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.